55 years, would you believe it? Some of us started out with a tour of the new Anamosa Library organized by Gloria Ford. I'm sorry I didn't take any shots inside, but it will be quite a facility that Anamosa will be proud of. It was a good place to kick things off with a little group picture. He's going to get a picture of the sign and he might get your head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, we're down here, John, not up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important sign. But get up here, bud. Okay, give him a minute. Call him Melvin. Get up here, Melvin. Melvin, Melvin get up here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Melvin's there. Scotty did a great job of organizing a tour of the old school. It was the first time several of us had been back inside, and it brought back some old memories. Everything seemed smaller than we remembered, but we found that the auditorium really had been reduced. Uh, once in 72 and then once in about 85. We can go in this way. I don't know if, you'll, if it will look the same to you or not. In the early 70s, these were all those wooden chairs, but they are still the original chair we, uh, we uh, put on the cushions and the fabric. And then, like I say, about the mid-80s, I think it was, they actually brought the walls in, creating these little passages from the back to the front. Yep. Hey, that, that hallway sure isn't as long as it used to be. There's Mr. Thompson's office. Yeah. That's Kansas. Well, that's the vocal music. Our band is in this new building in front. Oh, I see. Well, the band was on the stage. That's right. They've been into something really bad. I don't think they're going to open that one. I think they are. I don't think they are either. Yeah. Yeah. Right along, they've never shown more. Is that where it is? They screwed it up then, didn't they? Yeah. But they're up. See, this used to be. Where'd she go? This used to be two rooms. There was a wall here. But I think it was the old kitchen. No, the answer to those social studies questions, Miss Kavanaugh has them on the board. <laughs> oh, do oh, you remember? <laughs> Every morning. See, 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 see. I remember my favorite scene. Oh, what is this, Rick? The, it's just shelves, oh. books, and they're covering up the paint, right? Yeah, for cleaning. Yeah. Oh. That's right, and business law is over here. Now, that slope down this way. Now, doesn't that slope that way? <laughs> I was telling someone that slope, if we took those steps, you'd then go up this slope and then up another slope. So I am wrong there. We had dinner at the City Limits restaurant located on the old Strawberry Hill. I guess it's still called that. We drafted Greta to be our master of ceremonies. Bud created, right, Bud? 
is all the things. No we, have, we have a contest to see who can answer the most questions about our years in high school. Fun game to play. We have a raffle of some really nice prizes from right here in Anamosa, right? Yeah. Right. And we have time to tell a few stories. And we're going to start with... We're going to start with Betty and Kay because they just came back from Ireland. Well, up. You can't hear a thing unless you're up. We had a wonderful two weeks plus two days. Um, we started at Dublin and we went around the whole end of Ireland. And uh, we, I played golf in Ireland and Betty got... Um, what did you do, Betty? You like this. Well, anyway, we had a great time, and we got back on Wednesday. We did laundry on Thursday and came out here on Friday. Wow. So we're still kind of recovering from it. So, but it was a good trip. Okay, how many grandchildren do you have? Everybody has to tell us how many grandchildren they have. Do you really have My granddaughter entered the Michigan... <laughs> Michiana Star Search. She's a very, very excellent performer. And um, they started with 300 candidates. She is the youngest one. She's 12, which is the minimum age. Um, some of you who I emailed to vote for her by email or by internet, um, but voted for her and uh, some of the other did. But uh, there were 40,000 votes cast. To make a long story short, she won. Oh! Congratulations. She won thousand dollars, and she'll be singing with the South Bend Symphony on June 26th at our outside theater. And so she'll be—you'll be hearing from her, I'm sure. Her name is Alexandra Holt, and um, she's just a performer. I, I wonder hear. where she got that beautiful no, voice no, from. My, no, no, honey, it is my dear friends, she was adopted. She's a Brazilian baby. And so she, I can't take any credit for it. I love you. Anyway, thank you. What do you have to tell us? It's been very uneventful, Jack. Carol smiles. She'll tell you. Carol, tell us about it. Come on. Very uneventful. Very uneventful. She has oh, a, built a new house. She built a beautiful new house. Come on. Several on top. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but they don't belong to Cheryl. That's true. That's true. Cheryl, how many grandchildren do you have? Four. Four? Okay. I have and and probably the happiest Four. grandmother in the world. Happiest grandmother in the crowd? Why? What's great about being a grandmother? Because I really yeah. enjoy my grandmother. Okay. And how You've old is your oldest? One, You've got a favorite one. He was, he was 20 this week and he's a junior at Iowa. He's a junior at Iowa. And the youngest is? 11. 11. And Her where does that youngest Bess. live? Her name is Bess. Her name is Bess. Oh, oh guys, do you remember <laughs> Cheryl's wonderful grandmother? You know, Cheryl's, Cheryl's mother, Cheryl's mother was the first person I ever met in Anamosa, I swear, because she walked by my house on Park Avenue four times a day, going to and from work at lunchtime, back to work and home again. I knew Bess Sherman before I knew anybody else in this crowd. But I can remember to you in the last five years. I saw those horses of yours. Tell us about them. Come on, not, huh? Not about 15 horses. That's about all I do with my family. 15 horses. But tell us what they are. Huh? Tell us. H-A-F-L-I-N-G-E-R. Halflingers. 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 And where are they from? Austria. They originally. Originally from Austria. You have how many? I think there's 14. 14 horses. I'm glad that I have said this before. Yes. I have three grandsons, but only one dear sweet little granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> only one. Uh, but Bess must be really special. I'd love to see it. All right, Jenny and Augie, what great things have happened to you in the last five years? <laughs>
Just ask her. Okay. I don't know who we still live on the farm. You do. <laughs> we'll die on the farm. Now, Jenny, you told me you were the only one in class that was still working. No, I'm probably But I am still working. You still work. Uh -huh. And tell us about bowling alley. Still work at the bowling alley? Uh -huh. Great. We have seven. We have three boys and we have seven grandchildren and one great grandson. Seven grandchildren and one great. One great. Okay. Uh, <coughs> other than that, I don't know. I think I work because it keeps me from killing him or him killing me. I don't know. <laughs> I have wonderful memories from my Yeah. And it was great to be back here today. And it was great to go to the library on the day after. Now, is it time to give a good round of applause to Scotty for setting up our new tour? I was just going to say that. <laughs> Margaret, uh, we got you seven and one, right, Jenny? We got you with seven grandchildren and one great. Seven, right? seven, and three boys, seven grandchildren, one great. Okay. We got to we got to start writing it down, Willie, or we're going to lose track. We've got K with. 10, day to day, you've got to tell us that story. Would you tell us the story? They all know it. Say it again because I've forgotten. She was out of school for four years and came back when she was 18 to graduate with our class, and then they moved her up so she could graduate with us because she was way the smartest in the class. Yes. The rest of us, she did it in three years. She did it in three years, and she did it with honors. Honors. Can you believe that? No grades. Well, we have six grandchildren right now expecting another one at the end of the month. Right. My boys were all over when they started having their kids. Yeah. And uh, we're still living on the farm. And I, I still work too. I work for Regency Home. I'm a jack of all trades and master of none. <laughs> I don't believe it. But we also have a little sad news. Our 12 year old granddaughter was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in February. She's currently taking chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. in the hands of the good Lord. And where does she live, John? She lives in Bedmore. Her dad's a uh, pharmacist, and her mother had cancer four, four and a half years old. Yeah. Oh, cancer survivor. And the kind she's got very rare. There's only about 250 cases of it in the United States a year. The doctor that they had said it's especially kind of probably one out of me. Everything down to the university hospital. We have nothing but credit for the university hospital. We're doing one of the things that way. But like I said, it's in the hands of the Lord. Well, thank you for and sharing. And then we had our first twins a year ago. The youngest boy around in Lakeland Park, Ben. Ben and Lou. <laughs> Two boys, Ben and Lou. Oh, what wonderful names. So would you like to tell us something about you, Frank O'Brien, that we don't know? Well, my son has four boys. Okay. In high school. And I have a daughter that has one. The other daughter has one married. I have five grandchildren. And uh, everything is just going along. And do you live here in town, Frank? Marshalltown. Okay. We're so <laughs> Gala, tell us about you. Well, I've got seven grandchildren. Seven grandchildren for me. Two boys. Oh my god. Lost two. Got five girls. Uh, still work the business, but not too hard. You still run the the RV business? <laughs> No, that's that's 
that's an important contribution to the community. No great grandchildren. Seven grandchildren, but no greats. Do you tell us about you? You're a success. Do you know what his wife said at the dinner table tonight? I'm going to tell you a secret, okay? His wife says he's never made a bed, never done a dish, oh. never dusted, oh. never done the laundry. This is a man who has had a how many years caretaker? 34 year caretaker. Oh. Oh. Hey. hey, Jimmy, how'd you pull that off, huh? What do you have to say about Is that the truth? Was she lying about you? What do I do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me nothing. You did nothing. I'll have to stick up for a little bit. So okay. Yeah, can you? <laughs> tree farms. Where do you plant trees? Oh, yeah? Oh, that's what. <laughs> Jimmy, what, do you want to, what did you enjoy about the trip to the high school tonight? Is there anything about that that was fun? He didn't hear you. He can't hear. Tell us how many grandkids you have. Tell us how many grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Would you know how many grandkids you have? I don't count them. You have to count them. You have 15 grandchildren and 17 grandchildren and four greats. Wow, that's pretty amazing. All right, next. Come on, Scotty. Yes. Well, I've got four grandchildren, three girls and one boy, and I work full time trying to keep up with the damn grass. <laughs> and now the river has receded and left me a mess to clean up on my little acreage. Boy, I'll bet. But I've got a real good buddy, my new coon dog. And he is getting treated better than any of my kids ever got treated. And he's also eating all of your bones today. Yeah, I'm going to save all these bones for my dog. <laughs> he is a joy. We have him in at least twice a day. We have a bedspread that we put down in the kitchen to keep him scratching on the limb and a blank in the front room because we have to look at the river. He is treated like royalty. And what's his name? Spike. Prince Spike. Spike. Prince. <laughs> I'll say another thing for Scotty. Scotty okay. takes care of a lot of the neighbors. She takes care of one of mother's greatest <coughs> oldest friends. Goes all over grass all the way to the river. Oh, and he looks after her very well. Very well. We're too well. Oh, Scotty. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of others. You always did. You no, right. not always. Not always? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> this mouth isn't connected to the brain because the chain that hooks and two got lost several years ago. My boss told me that. <laughs> All right, bud. What do you have to tell me? I us? have four grandchildren. Two of, them, two of them are in Indianapolis, two of them are in St. Louis. Uh -huh. The two in Indianapolis are on their way to Portland, Maine, shortly. My son is still in the Air Force, he's a recruiter, and he has no problem of being shipped overseas because they don't have any recruitment from overseas. <laughs> he should have retired last June, but suddenly he declared war, so he couldn't. So he re-enlisted and he said he'll just stay the 24 years. We live still in St. Louis. We travel a lot with two other couples. They have trailers, we have an RV. I meet Mary now and then down in Texas. And we've made a couple trips to Florida and Shirley's house. And we stay on Patrick Air Force Base when we go down there. Uh, Are you still singing? We you both still sing in the choir. Jenna directs the handbell choir. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, let's see, what else is that going on? We have a hobby of going to estate sales, which some people call tag sales. Not garage sales, but the estate sales. And we do stay, we still do stained glass as a hobby. And we stay quite busy. We both bowl, we both play golf. And uh, we have a little dog. We adopted a dog from about the age she last fall. She's six years old and does a little dog. She likes to travel. She's out in the RV now. Yeah, it was very thoughtful of you to adopt a dog. Okay, we still live 
got to talk about it. We don't live to talk about it. We have She has 11. 11? They all live with him. Yeah, great. Can you imagine? Well, yeah. Oh, they have two grandchildren in Spain, part of the Animals of High School trip. You know, the kids who were taking French and Spanish signed up for two weeks in Europe and they got to spend a week in Spain and a week in France. And your granddaughter just sent an email home, is that right? And where was she? But is he going to be the Missouri State Heavyweight Wrestling Champion next year? I don't think he'll be a heavyweight. He's the next class down. But he will, could be the Missouri State Wrestling Champion? Uh, I know. He <laughs> might be. He got most improved wrestling. Is that right? Now, you and I have something in common. My, grand, my grandson became, got the most improved wrestler at the Madras High School team this year, too. Okay. Good. John Sanner has something really, really exciting to share with us. In December 2001, we had a lifetime experience. We got a call about 7 o'clock one morning. It was our niece, Sarah, from Boulder, Colorado. Her husband, Carl Wyman, had just been notified he was going to get a Nobel Prize in physics. So Marilyn and I, along with our son and daughter, went to Stockholm for the ceremony. Here we are with our daughter, Linda, and here is our son, Steve, with Sarah and Carl. This is another niece, Sandy and her husband Robert Graves were all spiffed up ready to go to the ceremony. Tickets were limited so the rest of the family had to watch on TV. And we all watched the big banquet on TV after the ceremony. Sarah and Carl did manage to get us invitations to a couple of less formal receptions before the ceremony. Each one of the Nobel Prize winners has to give a lecture and we had reserved seats for those. It was the 100th anniversary of the Nobel Prize, so we rubbed elbows with 166 previous Nobel winners. We also did some sightseeing, both on our own and with the Nobel laureates. It wasn't a very long trip, but it was probably the most memorable one we'll ever have. I won't be able to say anything as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, as you all know, I didn't get married until I was 38, and uh, and had no children, so I can't tell you about any grandchildren or great grandchildren that I have because I have none. And and I'm glad I followed John Sam. But listen, you know what Betty is? Betty, is, she's a remarkable person. She's a 59-year survivor of juvenile diabetes, and practically nobody survives. And that, to that extent, and we are so proud Thank of you. Thank you very much. You know that takes tremendous effort. No fooling. I think about the time we found out that Betty was sick and how worried we all were about her at that time. In her junior year in high school. And look at her today. And I survived two sisters. That's right. When I her beautiful story, sister Patsy was my sister's best friend. And my sister never got over the loss of Patsy as her friend. But uh, we're glad to have Betty with us. What have you been doing, Greta? Oh, me? Well, I said, like Jenny, I'm still working. I teach at the University of Southern California Educational Sociology to undergraduates. I was teaching graduate classes for Cal State Dominguez Hills, and now I've gone to gra undergraduate students, and I enjoy them very much. They're 20 years old, and they're so fresh, and they're so full of passion and love. I, I just really love my work. However, I'm finishing in December my term of employment at USC, and so I really am through working. Do you believe it? I am going to quit. But this is my fifth. This is my 50th year in education, 5-0. I started at 22, and I'm finishing at 72. And I'm really proud of having done 50 years in education. I guess so. I guess. All right, that's it. My five, oldest grandson five. is in the Marine Corps. He survived an assignment to Bahrain. He didn't have to go to Iraq. And he's back in San Diego, and he's alive and well, and we're really glad. He has one year left in the Marine Corps. 
Uh, we have our fingers crossed that he doesn't have to go back again. I have um, four boys and only one girl, but she's Casey Elizabeth, and she's the goalie on the water polo team in high school. Uh, she's built like, like a goalie. She's like that commercial on television. You've seen that hockey goalie who goes in and fills the screen. That's my granddaughter. <laughs> she fills up the screen. My boy, she's a good goalie. All right. Well, Lee's going to tell us who won the contest, but... Well, I guess Come on. Well, who do you want to... I can't read who that. Won who had the most? Scotty and I both have glaucoma. Well, Anybody else here have glaucoma? The, Paul has you. 20. <laughs> Paul counts for 20. 10 and 10. And Jimmy has 15 and 4. Now you tell me who won. All right. Now just a minute. There's a prize. <laughs> Daily Creek Penitentiary Red Wine coming out of a red hot Daily Winery. Pass that bottle to Paul. There's the winner. All right, Bud. Bud, are you going to decide at the end of this who answered the most? Teach. The first one is. After the Lone Ranger saved the city and rode off into the sunset, the grateful citizens would ask, "Who was that masked man?" Invariably, someone would answer, I don't know, but he left it okay. behind. What did he leave behind? Silver bullet. Good boy. He didn't raise Good, John Sanders. <laughs> <Good boy. laughs> the Beatles first came to the USA in early 1964. We all watched him on the... It's Sullivan Show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess he said it. The phrase you don't hear much anymore is store-bought. Thank you for But when we were young... We got store-bought clothes, some people didn't get store-bought clothes. Coast to coast with the phrase, with the, with the old hardware store, now it's worldwide. Wall to wall meant what? Carpet to carpet. Wall -wall. The magical term in our home. In the 50s, we covered the hardwood floors with wall to wall carpet. Well, well, Who's number four? Oh, you need some crackers. <laughs> Who's number four? The wine wasn't so good for Scotty. Who's number four? What are you? Galen four. Galen number four. Another bottle of penitentiary wine. Penitentiary? <laughs> All right. Next. Well, here, you can have this one. <laughs> We closed with Sunday morning breakfast at the family restaurant on Main Street. We had a little trouble convincing Scotty to get out of bed so early, but he made it, and we enjoyed a little more socializing before the out-of-towners pulled out.